in today's lecture we will be studying recurrence relations. Our starting point is discrete numeric functions which we have discussed in last two lectures. Suppose, A is a discrete numeric function which is written as A equal to a sequence of real numbers which we denote in general by A 0, A 1, A 2 and so on then A n minus 1, A n and onward. Now, sometimes what happens is that the entry a n of the discrete numeric function can be related in certain ways to the previous entries. For example, let us look at this relation a n equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 2 and a 0 equal to 0 and a 1 equal to 1. Now, we start from a 0 and of course, it is given that a 0 is 0, then we come to the next entry that is a 1 which is also given as a 1 uh, is 1 and then a 2 according to my rule over here is a 1 plus a 0 which is equal to 1 again after that a 3 which is equal to a 2 plus a 1 which is 1 plus 1 equal to 2 then we have a 4 which is equal to a 3 plus a 2 which is 2 plus 1 that is 3 then a 5 equal to a 4 plus a 3 this is 3 plus 2 equal to 5 and we have to proceed in this way. Thus, we have a sequence whose first few terms are 0, 1, 1, then 2, then 3, then 5 and then of course, 8 and so on. Now, this is an example how a discrete numeric function can be generated recursively and uh, we get very interesting sequence sequences. For instance, the sequence that we have just seen is the famous Fibonacci sequence. And the relationship that we get here is called a recurrence relation.
and the conditions that we write down as a 0 equal to 0 and a 1 equal to 1 are called initial conditions. Now, we can have many more examples of recurrence relations. For example, we could have written a n equal to 3 a n minus 1 minus 2 times a n minus 2. So, I write a n equal to 3 times a n minus 1 minus 2 times a n minus 2 and I start from n greater than or equal to 2 and for a 0 and a 1 I have to uh, choose some initial conditions. Like this we can have uh, re recurrence relations like a n equal to n minus 1 a n minus 1 plus n minus 1 into a n minus 2 or we could have had a n equal to a 0 a n minus 1 plus a 1 a n minus 2 plus and so on up to some a n minus 1 into a 0, where the corresponding discrete numeric function is a 0, a 1 and all that. So, we see that at each term over here, we have a product of two entries of the discrete numeric function. Then we could have had uh, a n square equal to a n minus 1 square minus 1. So, we see that there are many many different discrete numeric functions, but the essence of uh, sorry there, uh, there are many many different recurrence relations, but the essence is that given a discrete numeric function a 0 a 1 a n minus 1 a n I try to build up a relationship involving uh, a n equal to the previous terms some f of a 0 up to a n minus 1. Our goal in this topic is to find out expressions of a n purely in terms of n. So, we would like to find out a function of n explicitly written in terms of n which gives me the values of a n for n let us say greater than or equal to some number n 0. Now, in general this is a difficult problem and uh, there is no uh, general technique of handling uh, this problem if, if if somebody gives us a, uh, a general uh, recurrence relation, but we can restrict the class of recurrence relations that uh, we consider and uh, build up some strategies or some general techniques of solving those recurrence relations. So, now our job 
is to find out a special uh, class of uh, recurrence relations and these will be called linear recurrence relations. So, I go to the next page. linear recurrence relation. All right. So, in case of a linear recurrence relation, uh, we will write a n in terms of some coefficients and the previous values of the discrete numeric function. So, I have C 1 a n minus 1 plus C 2 a n minus 2 and so on up to c k a n minus k plus f n. Here in general the coefficients c i's can be functions of n, but we further reduce this class to a more restricted one called linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients. Now, linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients are those linear recurrence relations for which the C i's are constants. So, in this case C i's are constant for all i equal to 1, 2 and so on up to k. And now, one would like to ask that uh, what is this k? k is of course, something less than n and it k signifies the situation that we look back up to some steps, but we stop at uh, after uh, after a while. So, k is called the order of the recurrence relation, k is called the order of the recurrence relation. For example, if k is 1, the recurrence relation will be a, a n equal to c 1 a n minus 1. If k is equal to 2, then the recurrence relation will be a n equal to c c 1 
a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2. If k is equal to 3, then the recurrence relation will be a n equal to c 1 a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2 plus c 3 a n minus 3. So, the first one will be called first order recurrence relation, first order, the second one is second order, the third one is third order and so on. So, we see that when we are looking at the first order linear recurrence relation, then we are just looking one step back and uh, a n is some constant times the previous entry to a n. When I am looking at the second order recurrence relation uh, linear recurrence relation let us say with constant coefficients then a n is nothing but a constant multiplied to a n minus 1 plus another constant multiplied to a n minus 2 and similarly for the third or the fourth and so on. Then we question what about this f n? This f n can be identically 0 that means, it is possible that f n is 0 for all n. Now, if f n is 0 for all n, then we get a n equal to c 1 a n minus 1 up to c k a n minus k. This recurrence relation is said to be a linear recurrence relation uh, which is homogeneous or homogeneous linear recurrence relation. Now, it can be with or without constant coefficients. If f n is not 0, then we have a non homogeneous linear recurrence relation. So, we have a classification of recurrence relations. So, we started with general recurrence relations which can be absolutely anything, but we restricted ourselves to linear recurrence relations and a sub class of linear recurrence relations called linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients and within linear recurrence relations there are two different classes linear recurrence relations get split up into non homogeneous linear 
recurrence relations and homogeneous linear recurrence relations. Now, what we are going to do is to further restrict ourselves. So, we will restrict ourselves to k equal to 2. So, the class that we are going to consider now is linear recurrence relations with constant coefficients having order 2. First we will check order 2 and in the process we will automatically understand what to do with order 1. Now, if we have this then the recurrence relation will be of the type a, a n equal to c 1 n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2 plus f n. Now, I further restrict I make f n equal to 0. So, I take the homogeneous case which gives me a n equal to c 1 a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2. My aim is to find a way to write a n purely as a function of n equal to some g n and let us see how to do that. So, we have a recurrence relation of this type where c 1 and c 2 are constants and a i's are, uh, are values from some discrete numeric function. We have to find that function. What we do is that we take a so called trial solution. We say that let a n is equal to some capital A times r to the power n. I do not know r, but I know that a is a constant and r is also some values that we would like to find out. We place this in the equation uh, above to get a r to the power n and we transpose the elements of the right hand side to left hand side. So, I get c 1 a 
r to the power n minus 1 plus c 2 a r to the power n minus 2 equated to 0 and from this we get r to the power n minus c 1 r to the power n minus 1 plus c 2 r to the power n minus 2 the whole thing inside a parenthesis and into a equal to 0. It is very reasonable to assume that a not equal to 0, because if the constant a is equal to 0, then we have nothing to do. We have the solution a n equal to 0 and of course, that is a solution, but uh, we can do very little with that, that solution. So, we write the equation as oh, there is a mistake here it will be minus instead of plus. So, I replace by minus here and Uh, this is also minus. So, now I have minus and here also this is minus. So, minus C 2 R n minus 2 this is equal to 0. Now, again we can do something that is we can take the common factor r to the power n minus 2 out from this expression. So, I have r to the power n minus 2 equal to r square minus c 1 r minus c 2 equal to 0. Now, again it is very reasonable to assume that r is not equal to 0, because if r is equal to 0 again we have the 0 solution which is of course, a solution in this case, but it is it's, it's useless. So, we have r square minus r c 1 r minus c 2 equal to 0. we see that proceeding as above we have arrived at a degree 2 polynomial equation and we know how to solve that. So, we can write the solution as r equal to 1 by 2 into c 1 plus or minus root over c 1 square plus 4 c 2. At this point, we have the well known theory of solving quadratic polynomial equations in one variables and we know that uh, r has uh, three choices r can have two different values for which this quadratic equation is satisfied or we can get a single value that is c 1 by 2 which satisfies this quadratic equation or this expression inside the square root can be a negative one and therefore, r may admit only two complex roots complex uh, uh, that is the equation will be admitting 
only two complex solutions. In this lecture, we will restrict ourselves to the case where 1 2 distinct real values of R are available to only one real value of R is available which is the um, repeated root. The repeated root of the equation or uh, one can say the polynomial r square minus r 1 c 1 r minus c 2 the repeated root. So, there are two cases that we will be studying in this lecture. Now, the first case is where I have got two different solutions, I call them R 1 and R 2. So, I know that R 1 square minus C 1 R 1 minus C 2 is equal to 0. I also know that R 2 square minus C 1 R 2 plus uh, minus C 2 equal to 0. So, what I see is that I if I go back to the uh, if I if I let us say if I build two different solutions one as r equal to some capital A times r 1 n and r equal to some let us write a 1 and let us write a 2 r 2 n then I can replace each of them in the recurrence relation which is given by a 1 minus c 1 a n minus 1 minus c 2 a n minus 2. If I replace Uh, just uh, I should write this as a n as we have taken as a solution it is not r, but this is a n. So, this is a n and this is also a n what I want to say is that the a n has two possibilities. So, then if I put uh, a n as the first possibility of a n in the recurrence relation, I will see that a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus c 1 a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 1 minus c 2 a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 2 which is equal to a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 2 r 1 square minus c 1 r 1 minus c 2 
and this is of course, equal to 0. So, this of course, satisfies the recurrence relation given by this and similarly, the other solution also satisfies the recurrence relation, but what is interesting is that if we add these two solutions and get something like this a 1 r 1 raised to the power n plus a 2 r 2 raised to the power n. Let us call this a n. Now, if I replace this in my in the left hand side of the recurrence relation which is essentially this, then I get a 1 r 1 raised to the power n plus a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus c 1 times a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 1 plus a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus c 2 a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 2 plus a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus 2 and rearranging the terms I will get the terms that we have already got that is a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus n minus c 1 a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 1 minus c 2 a 1 r 1 raised to the power n minus 2 plus a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus c 1 a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus c 2 a 2 r 2 raised to the power n minus 2. Now, this is of course, 0 first first term is 0 we have already seen over here second term is also 0 that we can check because after all this is a solution. So, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 thus we see that we can construct essentially an infinite number of solution by taking linear combinations of r 1 raise to the power n and r 2 raise to the power n. I am essentially free to take any constant values for a 1 and a 2. Thus, we have obtained several solutions of the linear recurrence relation we started with, but what is most surprising is that advanced theory of recurrence relations tells us that for the recurrence relation under consideration these are essentially all the solutions of that one. Therefore, the job that remains for us is to put the initial conditions and obtain the values of the constants which will give us the particular recurrence relations that we are looking at. We will check the first recurrence relation that we built up which is corresponding to Fibonacci sequence the refer recurrence relation is a n minus a n minus 1 minus a n minus 2 equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 2 along with the initial condition a 0 equal to 0 and a 1 equal to 1. Now, let us take the trial solution as a n 
equal to a constant times r to the power n and if I put this expression in the right hand left hand side I will get a r to the power n minus a r to the power n minus 1 minus a r to the power n minus 2 equal to 0. And then if I take the common factors of all the terms then I get a into r to the power n minus 2 multiplied by r square minus r minus 1 equal to 0 and we know that this means that I have to solve the quadratic equation given by r square minus r minus 1 equal to 0 and we can of course do that by writing the general form and which is r equal to 1 half of 1 plus or minus 1 plus 4 which is equal to 1 plus or minus root 5 by 2. Therefore, the general equation sorry gen general solution of this recurrence relation is of the form a n equal to some constant a 1 times 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 raised to the power n plus a 2 1 minus root 5 divided by 2 raised to the power n this is for n greater than or equal to 2 and for a 0 I know it is 0 and for a 1 it is 1. Now, what I do here is that I try to fit the expression that I have got over here from n equal to 0 onward. So, I force a 0 equal to 0 and force the this expression in the right hand side to get a 1 plus a 2 and then 1 equal to a 1 times 1 plus root 5 by 2 plus a 2 times 1 minus root 5 by 2 that is all and so I have generated two equations suppose I am able to solve them and get the values of a 1 a 2 then I can plug in the values of a 1 a 2 uh, in this equation to get a solution for for the Fibonacci sequence uh, recurrence relation. So, what I do here is that from 1 we have a 2 equal to minus of a 1 substituting in 2 we have a 1 equal to 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 minus 1 minus root 5 divided by 2 which should be which should be equal to 1 and this is same as a 1 times 2 dividing 2 root 5 equal to 1 2 gets cancelled. So, I have a 1 equal to 1 by root 5 and 
a 2 equal to minus 1 by root 5. Therefore, we ha arrive at the solution of the recurrence relation that we are considering here, we will say a n equal to 1 by root 5 into 1 plus root 5 by 2 raised to the power n minus 1 by root 5 1 minus root 5 by 2 raised to the power n for all n greater than or equal to 0. Thus, in today's lecture we have introduced the idea of recurrence relation, then we have introduced linear recurrence relations and restricted the, that to the class of constant coefficients. We have introduced the classification homogeneous and non homogeneous recurrence relations, linear recurrence relations and lastly we have considered a homogeneous linear recurrence relation with constant coefficients which corresponds to Fibonacci sequence and completely solved that relation. This is all for today's lecture, thank you.